Hi, my name is Pratiksha, and I'll be presenting our work um, Don't Hate the Player, Hate the Game, uh, which is on safety conditions for uh, congestion control protocols in heterogeneous settings. This is joint work with Matei Zaharia and Tatsu Hashimoto. So in the early days of congestion control, the main goal of algorithms was to prevent catastrophic outcomes like congestion collapse in the network. However, a straw man solution to preventing network collapse is to send no packets at all. So there is an implicit requirement here that congestion control algorithms should also optimize some performance goals. Uh, so for example, protocols like TCP New Reno might implicitly prioritize good utilization, uh, or protocols like TCP Vegas might prioritize low latency. And newer protocols might prioritize application level quality of service metrics or require some fairness guarantees and so on. Unfortunately, when protocols that have different objectives use the same network, this could lead to some suboptimal outcomes. So for example, um, when TCP Nurino uses the same link as TCP Vegas, there's a well-known outcome that TCP Vegas can actually be pushed to getting zero throughput. Um, and this is a graph that also shows that phenomenon um, in simulation. And recent work has shown that when TCP BBR, which is a much more modern protocol, competes with TCP Cubic, even though these are both nominally buffer filling protocols, um, BBR consistently takes up a large share of the link bandwidth compared to each cubic flow. So one question we could ask is, are these issues somehow fundamental or are they just artifacts of protocols being suboptimal? So if a protocol prioritizes latency, is it always doomed to get zero throughput when it competes with a protocol that prioritizes throughput? So the goal of our work was to ask whether there are ways to analytically determine whether the performance goals of these protocols themselves are somehow incompatible before we go about trying to design algorithms, hoping that we will find algorithms that play well together for these performance goals. In the rest of the talk, I will describe the uh, sender and network model we used in our analysis, um, the technical intuition behind our formal safety guarantee, and then I'll give a worked example to demonstrate what this could mean for some real applications and discuss a few open questions. So I'll start with our um, network and utility model. So for this talk, we'll look at a simplified model of what we mean by performance goals. Each sender's utility is just its attained throughput minus some function of the per packet latency. Um, in particular, this function will have to be convex and monotone increasing, which is a technical condition for our analysis. And similar utility functions have been used by a number of recent papers that also take a utility-based approach to congestion control. So since we are concerned about latency-sensitive senders, here each sender controls its latency-sensitive by this one parameter, alpha i. So all senders have the same utility function except for this value of alpha i, and higher values of alpha i imply a sender that is more sensitive to delay increasing. So here i indexes the sender. We now want to understand whether heterogeneous agents will have good outcomes when playing against each other. So in order to understand this, let's look at agents in the context of a network game. So in this game, at each time step, each agent sends some number xi of packets into a network that has a single bottleneck link with capacity c. And the router simply allocates bandwidth proportionally to each agent. That's what these uh, expressions refer to. And agents also experience delay proportional to the total number of packets sent above the link capacity. So. We've defined the network performance goals and the network model, but we still haven't defined what it means for senders to be compatible. So to give one potential definition, let's think back to that example of TCP Nurino competing with TCP Vegas, where outcomes are bad for Vegas because it receives zero throughput. So in our work, we'll study this minimal compatibility condition that every sender should receive positive throughput at the Nash equilibrium of the game. So you can think of this as a safety condition in that it gives a minimal condition in which the network is usable for everyone and that everyone can send some packets. This seems like a minimal condition, but clearly uh, TCP Vegas and TCP Nurino don't achieve it, so it is some kind of a meaningful starting point. The goal of our analysis will be to characterize sets of utilities that play well together in the network in that even when senders are behaving selfishly, no one should choose to send zero packets. So in our example, the agents delay differ on their delay sensitivity, which is defined by this parameter alpha. So we'll try to derive a range of alpha values that will be compatible together. 
Unfortunately, the actual outcomes for each sender at the Nash equilibrium are hard to compute in general. So the main technical contribution of our work is to exploit structure in the game that makes this safety condition easier to compute than the exact Nash equilibrium. The high-level intuition is that we'll compute an upper bound on how delay-sensitive a sender can be, uh, given the alpha value of the most aggressive player in the network or the least delay-sensitive player in the network. So now I'll talk through some intuition for, for our proof before introducing the formal safety guarantee. So let's look back at the network game that we introduced previously. So here we can see that the throughput is only a function of the sender's input and the sum of all remaining inputs. And similarly, the delay is only a function of the total input. Um, so we should be able to uh, use the aggregate input to control individual sender's utilities. I won't go through the proof in this talk, but we can show a monotonicity property of the congestion control game that as the aggregate of the other player's inputs decreases, the equilibrium rate of the remaining sender increases. So this means that if we can upper bound the value of that competing aggregate, this gives us a lower bound on the input rate of the last sender. So if the aggregate decreases from that upper bound, the remaining sender's rate will only increase. In order to derive this upper bound, we'll consider a corresponding worst case game in which all players have the same utility as the least delay sensitive player. So intuitively, as the players in the game get more competitive or less delay sensitive, the equilibrium aggregate increases. So we show in our paper that the aggregate in this equilibrium upper bounds the aggregate in the original game, and in fact, it upper bounds the aggregate in any game where the minimum value of alpha is this alpha min, the least delay sensitive player. So I'll briefly cover the formal safety condition that we prove in our paper. So here, B sim is the worst case aggregate that I discussed in the previous slide. So given this worst case aggregate, we can give an upper bound on the highest delay sensitivity a player can have such that its equilibrium preference will be positive. So that is, if all players' alpha values fall between alpha min, which is fixed, and alpha ma max, which is given by our bound, then the equilibrium throughput should be positive for everyone. This result is for a game with n players, but we can show that it also holds for any number of players greater than n. So I'll now discuss a simple example to show how this framework could potentially be used to reason about some real-world applications. So in this example, we set up three applications using a 10 megabit per second link. Here, two of the applications, Skype and Google Meet, are relatively more latency sensitive, while we model the file transfer as being relatively insensitive but requiring higher bandwidth. We use a latency penalty that's quadratic in the delay. We looked at the minimum delay and bandwidth requirements for these three applications, and we derived alpha values that could correspond to each of these applications. And details on that derivation are in our paper. So if we push these values through our safety condition, we find that that upper bound on alpha um, is 4.37. Um, so there are details in the specifics of the calculation in our paper, but one takeaway here is that Google Meet, in our example, would not be able to minimally coexist with Skype and the file transfer on this 10 megabit per second link. So its equilibrium preference would be to send no packets. So this leaves us with a few open questions and some future directions. These are just a few questions that are raised by our analysis. Some of the questions have to do with regulation. So what should we do if we determine that certain applications will not be able to coexist in a network? So some users may self-select out of our game and choose to use a different network if they see low utility. On the other hand, we might ask if there are policy or network level enforcement decisions that one could make to try to enforce safe behavior in a network. We also analyzed a relatively simple model of the network and utility functions in this game, and it would be interesting to see whether our safety analysis techniques can be extended to more complex utility functions, network models, um, and potentially also other equilibrium concepts but beyond the Nash equilibrium. So to conclude, we've discussed a framework that allows us to reason about the safety of congestion control algorithms by reasoning about their utility functions directly by way of the equilibrium outcomes in a game, which we analyzed by comparing to a tractable worst case game. Thanks.